Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coffee and Chats. My name is Lindsay Giese, and I'm the Executive Director for River Arts, Inc. And today, I am joined by Tracy Thompson! Hi, guys! Good morning, Hello. Tracy! Cheers! Cheers, cheers! Thank you! Gotta get our coffee fix in this morning. Sure. I see that you have John Joseph, and so do I, the best coffee in town. Love yes. him. Love that family. The only thing you should be drinking these days. It's the truth. It's yes. the truth. And I have to say, I do miss his space in there. You know, yeah. to be able to congregate and visit and just hang out, it just feels so good in there. It is a cute space. It is. But they're doing, they're doing good things and, and sharing their coffee in other ways. They are. They've really gotten creative with how they're doing business and, you know, the deliveries. But I do miss going in there and just hanging out. So soon. Good. Soon, soon. Soon. Okay, Tracy, we've got a lot to talk about. So I'm jumping right in with you today. Yeah. As with all of our guests, I never give them the questions in advance. So it's always a surprise. Great. <laughs> Great. Just the way you like it. Yeah, bring it. All right, but I do like to hear uh, backgrounds about every guest because a lot of people know you since you've been here in South Prairie, but they don't know about your background. So could you please share a little bit about your beginnings? Okay, so like way back when were my... I mean, maybe not like a baby. <laughs> of course. Okay. I was um, Mauston. Yeah. A half hour, 45 minutes, well, probably 45 minutes down the road. I uh, grew up there. My parents are still there. Um, I had two brothers. Um, let's see, I lived there all the way until I graduated high school, and then I went off to college, and then a uh, bachelor's degree with uh, marketing and business, double major. And Where did you go to college? Uh, that's a whole long story. Oh. Where did it end up, or do you want that path? <laughs> I, Lakeland College is where I ultimately got my four-year degree. Okay. And they're based out of Sheboygan, but they have an outreach campus in Madison. Um, but I did have a little journey of hopping around from colleges. So I started off at UW-La Crosse. I wanted to be a phi ed teacher and a coach. And I was on the track team. I was a thrower there. And then after one year, I realized that wasn't for me. And so then I went to the tech school in La Crosse. And I wanted to get into, like, the medical field and quickly learned. Um, that wasn't my, my jam. I played volleyball and basketball for them. And then I met my husband. So I transferred to Madison College and played volleyball for them, and I got my associates in marketing. And then finally, it was just more of a self-gratification reasons, Lindsay, that I'm like, you know, I always wanted to get my bachelor's. Um, I'm not saying I necessarily needed it, you know what I mean? There's so much pros and cons about going to school and different, you know, things people decide and that in that wheelhouse of life, and I just said, you know what? I really want this, so I went after it. I got my four year in business and marketing at Lakeland. You know, my brother um, went to three different colleges too um, before he got his degree, and he called it the college tour. It's like yeah. a, it's just it's it people do. Why not try them all out? It is, and you know what? It's interesting. So I had a conversation with my niece who was going to college, and her first college didn't work out for her, and she was feeling really, really crummy about it. And I'm like, you know what, I feel like I need to share this story with her because I think as an 18 year old girl, she probably looks at somebody like me, like polished and, you know, professional. And then I just ended up getting here. Well, you know what, I have a backstory too. And I didn't find my right college right away either. And so I kind of walked through those steps with her to say, it's okay. You know, you'll find your way. And there might be other people listening that had that happen to them. Yeah. And it all worked out. So I love that you just brought up the, the polished person that we we see typically but uh, I hope that your niece watches this episode because I'm about to crush that image later <laughs> great <laughs> just wait that's a little teaser stay tuned oh, oh god okay were you prom queen at Boston homecoming I knew it <laughs> you had to be stop I'm turning red <laughs> uh, your dress Oh, you know what? I didn't. I had a pantsuit, a turquoise pantsuit. So modern. I yeah. like that. Look at you. I know. Yeah, I kind of got a little sassy, but like you're such a, a good long person. time ago. I tease you, but you're you're amazing. Thank you. In 2019, you were Volunteer of the Year. Following in your footsteps, I took over your crown. You were the Volunteer of the Year before. 
I love it. We, whoever is the 2020 volunteer of the year, we need to be friends because. For sure. Yes, without a doubt. Good group. Uh, what motivates you to do so much in the community? Like you are always out um, there. Well, thank you for that. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of it, Lindsay, to be honest with you, I was in corporate America for so, so long. I was in at Charter Business, or it's now called Spectrum, for 18 and a half years. And they were wonderful to me. I know people cringe um, when, I, when they hear the word charter, but believe it, they were an amazing company. They really, really do care about their customers, but things changed. And so to answer your question, I am volunteering because I want to. So like when I was at Charter and I had to go to the chamber meetings and I had to track, okay, who did you meet? How much money did you spend them on the golf outing? Are they going to end up being a customer? How much money are we going to, you know what I mean? It's like that, you know, corporate structure. And it's like, yes, I'm meeting these people at those events because I love that and I thrive off of that. But I, there's also like this underlying, like, you know, goal to get their business. And, and that's, that's not what it's like with me anymore. I go to these meetings because I want to. I feel like we have the best chamber of commerce around. I've met so many amazing, wonderful friends that also own businesses in this town that we're all after the same goal. And I'm doing these things because I truly want to, not because I have to. I don't know if that makes any sense, yeah. um, but there's a lot of opportunities to give. And I'm just glad I can do it now just out of goodness and not out of like necessity. Does, does well, that make sense? Lucky to have you here. You're Thanks. doing awesome things, so thank you. You bet. What yep. is something the Sauk Prairie community would be surprised to know about you? Oh my gosh. I mean, I know, hobbies, I know that you're really outdoorsy, so I don't know if that would be a surprise, but that's your, your yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I think they might be surprised because again, um, you know, I'm a, a professional that I'm doing my thing every day, but I love the woods. I love to go fishing. I'm a tomboy at heart. And so when I'm not, you know, working or, you know, doing my thing here, uh, we have a family cabin in Boston. Um, Again, same town I grew up in. People always thought that was weird. Like, you have a cabin in the same town? Yeah, two miles from my house, and we use it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll find me out there in my grubbies and helping around the lawn and putting worms on my son's fishing pole and going fishing and that kind of thing. So that might surprise him a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh. What's been one of your favorite side hustles? So, like... It could like a volunteering or different activities that you do what's like so besides your work you just so like a side hustle with volunteering or a side hustle that I just do yeah I mean I know you don't do like side hustles like work-wise yeah what would wine walk be one of them yeah is okay. that one of your favorite things you're doing well I would say I have I, I get the most out of that I mean I do a lot of different things but I just it really jazzes me to be able to raise that kind of money for um, and for those of you who don't know what the wine walk is, you know, we raise money for different organizations, you know, the bike trail, the Sauk City Library, the George Culver Community Library now. Um, and to get, you know, 400 tickets sold to an event and see our community come together and to be able to go into these different shops and try different wines, but it's also driving traffic into these businesses to see the joy in the business owners faces to also see the joy with all the participants and the wine walkers going through our community to see our streets packed, you know, from those hours that that's happening is just so much fun. Um, and then paired with like, like people like you, Lindsay, that help with the wine walk and John Bremen and Emily and the girls at the body shop and the girls at elite, we all come together because we have this vision and we want to have some fun. So, I don't know, it just is, it's a good time, it's a theme. I just think people are looking for things to do in town, but having that underlying gift to be able to donate large sums of money to organizations, I mean, that's what it's all about. To me. Tracy, I have a hilarious story about the wine walk. Oh God. <laughs> but one recently, uh, so I do help, I mean, you do everything, but I help with the ticketing side. Uh, Which is so huge. There's an email that um, the Prairie de Sac Wine Walk and the Sock Wine Walk use the same email address. So, and you know, John Brennan does the Sock side, but I kind of manage the, the, when it's the Prairie de Sac turn. Uh, but the wine, the, the email is Sock Hop Wine Walk is the name of that email. 
And uh, as I'm hoping that most people know by now, this, the Sauk Prairie School referendum passed recently, which is amazing. And River Art Center is having an addition. And so I've been a part of those discussions with team, like with the leaders in the school district and now architects. So I was on this Zoom meeting. Well, hey, they do Google Hangouts, a virtual meeting. I think there probably were like 20 to 30 people on this call. And I log in and somehow, I don't know how this happened, but uh, Chad Harnish, principal of the Sauk Prairie High School, texts me. He's like, it's so nice of the Sauk Hop Wine Walk to join us today. <laughs> I logged in under that email. <laughs> so when I popped up, it was my face and it just said Sauk Hop Wine Walk in this very professional meeting. <laughs> that is outstanding. Uh so and did I, anything get brought up, or was it just a little subtle joke between you and Chad then? Nobody else brought it up. It was just between us, but I was mortified, and I'm like, oh, I have to figure out how to change this. He's like, please don't. You know, in these meetings, we need, like, lighthearted things. Like, it's really funny. But I logged out and switched accounts and logged back in. Oh, leave I it to you. I couldn't deal. Yeah. So, Isn't that funny? funny? And even, like, the promotion videos that we've done, you and I, like, the Hawaiian wine walk was super fun, so trying fun. to get little teasers out there. And I've had people say, oh my God, I can't believe you and Lindsay were drinking at like nine in the morning. I'm like, first of all, it was apple juice and right. Lindsay put a little water in there to make it look like one. But, oh, it's been fun. Lots and lots happy, of fun. Happy to have that reputation now. That yeah, right? <laughs> like, hey, we do whatever we need to do to get you this going. I only day drink John Joseph coffee. Yeah, right. Cheers. Here's John Joseph. Okay, Tracy, here's a fun new thing. I did it with Matt Brennan's interview where I um, showed a slideshow of photos. Oh, God, no. There are photos that I found on your Facebook page. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, and what happens next? Well, I'm going to show you them, and I just want to chat a little bit about these photos. <laughs> so, but I need you, don't, don't, just look away for a second, because I don't want you to see what, I'll tell you when I'm ready. Okay, you can look again. Okay. Do you, see my, do you see the white screen? Yeah, I sure do. Okay, so I just, you know, I want you to tell me a little bit about some of these photos. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That was Pi Day, and those uh, funds were being raised for the bike trail, the Great Sox Day Trail, mm -hmm. and that was held at the Vintage, and that was so much fun, so that what they did is they had Certain people in the community, like myself, um, there was time slotted to be auctioned off to throw a pie in. So the more money that you spent, whoever won the bid got to throw a pie in your face. And so the place is packed, right? Tons of people, awesome event. They're selling like real pies. Vintage is selling like little like meat pies to eat. They have like pie inspired themed beer. Totally fun event. So fun. And I get up there and then they're, some, they're auctioning. They're like, yep, 10 bucks, yep, 15. And then they just kept going higher and higher. I can't see who's bidding on me. I'm like, who in the heck is it? They're way in the back. Kept going, going, going. Come to find out later, the winner and the girl on the right in this picture, in the striped shirt, is my very, very best friend, Melanie Feldman Gray. We have been friends since the first grade. And she found out about it the last minute. And she told her husband and kids, she's like, I'm leaving. I'm going to sock. And so she came and surprised me and bid on me and threw a pie in my face. Oh, so, I love it. It was so much fun to know that she was there. You know, she's been always there. No matter what it is in my life, she's there. And she comes to, to do this. So, so anyway. It looks like the pie was delicious. It was. It was. It was. was it the Great Sox State Trail? That was the Great Sox State Trail. It was. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes. oh, oh. How have I never seen this photo? <laughs> First of all, the girl on the right's makeup is amazing. Oh my goodness, yes. So that was, I was a bearded lady, of course, and that was the Baraboo Wine Walk. And so I was helping my dear friend, Lacey Steffes, who owns Fast Serenity. And um, she, by the way, if anybody doesn't know this, Lacey um, gave birth to the wine walks around this area. Like she started them in downtown Baraboo. And the next thing you know, everybody loved them. And then Reedsburg starting to do them and Lodi's doing them. And we did it. She's just this mastermind. But anyway, um, it was a circus theme. Um, and so we had a ball with it. And so the two girls on the right were at the salon next door, Robert Henry Salon. And then they, we just met in the back alley for a photo because they're friends of mine. So much fun. Do you still have the beard? I do. 
Yeah, I have a big, I have like four costume bins. I love to dress up. So you just never know when you're going to need a beard again, right? Right. <laughs> oh. Remember. Yes. For roller skating around town. <laughs> yes. That was um, our wine walk, and that was a sports theme, and we were raising money for the uh, Sock Prairie Parks and Rec Department, um, friend, the friends of the Sock Prairie Parks and Rec Department, and so I was, what was the name? The Remax Rebels, and I was the roller derby chick for the sports theme, um, and Brian and Mary Weeks were kind enough to let us use their building to kind of like be the headquarters of the event. It was a beautiful day, and that was the Prairie du Sip, which Lindsay Geezy named, isn't that clever? The Prairie du Sip. Um, and that was another huge success. But that, I again, love to dress up. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Willie and Waylon. <laughs> this is impressive. Thanks. So this one is the very- I don't know which one you really are. Oh, seriously? I was Willie. No, I was <laughs> Oh, the costumes are so good. Oh my goodness. So that's my friend Debbie Schwartzer. Um, and she's from the Dells. She's a flipping riot. Um, but anyway, it was the Beardwood Chambers golf outing and we were there sporting them and it was a like theme for like celebrities. So we decided to go as Willie and Waylon. And then I sponsored a hole. Instead of just like, here's a hundred bucks, I'm gonna sponsor a hole. I of course wanted to have some fun with it. So I made that picture, like my face, and you know how they put like the signs in where you like drive, like the first at the tee box. So it's my face with my Remax logo, and it says, Willie, get the longest drive. So that was, I sponsored that, and then whoever got the longest drive earned a prize at the end. And then I also did a girl, a woman's version. So I did Will, he, w Willie, get it, Willie Nelson, Willie slash she, get the longest drive. So we had just had a really playful, fun day at the Beerboo Chamber. Oh, so fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, my Juders. I couldn't believe this when I saw it. I was like, oh my, look at her super preggers cross country ski. Super, I was, I think a week away from my due date on that picture actually. <laughs> Um, I cross country skiing at Mirror Lake State Park. I was all by myself and um, I asked somebody to take my picture because I'm like, that's a pretty cool memory to have, you know, and I felt really good up all the way through my pregnancy. And so oh. my little Jude is getting ready for that. Ah. Big winner. Oh my Your goodness. I'm so proud. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> that is Dancing with the Stars last year to, in June of 2019. And so that was fun, so much fun. I had an opportunity to dance with um, a professional, for those of you, I'm here at River Arts, obviously most of you know that, but so we got to dance with professionals and learn, I got to learn salsa and go out with some pretty amazing um, other celebrities. And I use that term loosely when it comes to me in town, raised a lot of money, um, but that was fun. I was like so embarrassed, I had pictures of my parents. I'm like, my dad is what? 80 years old and he's watching his daughter dance recital ultimately <laughs> like, they have been there for everything for me and they end up coming to that event too so i got to i came to one of your rehearsals because part of the the show we filmed rehearsals so i did that one day and oh my gosh i just died you like your rehearsal of shimmying you were laughing so hard the whole time <laughs> and i was dying and... yeah yeah my body i don't dance so <laughs> it was Thank you for the, for organizing that, Lindsay. Just like everything else you do, it's a lot of work. You make it look so flawless and piece of cake, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And I appreciate you thinking of me and it was a, it was a memory I'll always have. It was so much fun. It was, a, it was a blast. And, and all really well done. Look at that. Look at that. My the, girl. The good pair. <laughs> Lindsay. Um, that was the 80s theme wine walk. That was a blast. That one was in Sauk City last year. And you and I met for a little after get together at our friend's place and took a fun little memorable shot with your crimper. Look at your crimped hair. Oh, you are spot on. You. Now, you know that jacket. So I was like, oh, I just need something else to like finish out my outfit. And so at the last minute, I went to Walmart because it was the only thing open. And I'm like looking through all the racks and I see this jacket. There's no price tag on it. 
to go up to the register and I'm like, I, I would really like to buy this, but can you tell me how much it is? And they looked at me and they're like, how much are you willing to pay for it? <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> I don't, and I was like, I don't know, five bucks. <laughs> and they were like, sold. <laughs> That is fantastic. What about the gold Never. leggings? Where'd you get those little numbers? The leggings? Yeah, those gold things. Um, it's actually part of a unitard. Um, <laughs> and that is from my, I shouldn't share this. Matt Brennan, don't listen. Um, it's from Sock Prairie Show Choir Days, my sophomore year. Uh, I kept that unitard. I think it was a public service to keep it so nobody else would ever have to actually wear it on stage again. Wow. Unbelievable. But it gets a lot of use. But uh, that night when I was outside, people thought that I just had like bare legs and or they were and they were like super shiny and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I think 95% of the people dressed up for that. So that was a scream. I mean, Nathan Dishler, I don't know if you saw him, he was like knocked it out of the park. His outfit was, <laughs> it was hysterical. I loved it. I loved it. It was so much fun. I love these wine walks. I do. Too. Last one. Oh. I pooped today. That's a funny shirt. My friend Mackenzie made me that shirt. I had this vision. She's like, I got you, girl. So um, that is another volunteer opportunity for us, Lindsay. We were out picking up cow pies last year. First time ever for me. We were out at, um, was it Litcher's? Yep. Yeah. We are at Litcher's Farm. And we went out there and did our thing and scooped and tried to find the perfect uh, cow pie for the cow chip festival because that they had to dry out, they had to do their thing. And so we were out there, I think in July, weren't we? Was it July? It was June or August? July. Yeah, we were scooping the poop, yep. We were scooping poop. But they needed some volunteers, so why not, right? It's surprisingly fun. It is. So if anybody's ever interested, truly, reach out to Marietta. Uh, she's the cow chip committee. It's something you can do social distance wise. Sure. Yep, but every year they need help, so regardless. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so that's, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go back to. Yeah. That was fun. Now see, not, you know, you're I, thought we were I showed all of those just to show how awesome you are. Well, thank you. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick the one of me in like my ballerina outfit when I was like in sixth grade and I was just. I couldn't find that one, but I do <laughs> love that one. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. So, um. Why Remax? Why did you, switching now to serious stuff, career stuff, um, uh, of, of all the companies, like what's, what, what pulled you yeah. in Remax? Yeah. That's a good question. And so for those of you who know me, I have a tendency to like really do my research. And so when I was entertaining the idea of getting into real estate, I um, reached out to a lot of different agencies. I met with like the top producers, I've met with the top teams, like I reached out to them. I met with maybe not so great producers and not so great teams. I met with agencies in Boston where I'm from. I met with agencies here in town and in Madison, just to kind of get my feelers out and see what might be the right fit for me, what works for one agency and what doesn't for the other. Um, I did have a good friend of mine that I used to work with at Charter. He was over at Remax Grand and in Baraboo, and they've been there for, I think, eight or nine years. They're right next to the Little Village Cafe, right next to um, the Al Ringling. And he had so many good things to say, and I really love my broker, Nancy Kathlish. She's got four daughters. She's just like this caring, compassionate mother that cares deeply about her agents and her offices. And so it just was the right you know, chemistry, if you will, and it felt right. Um, at the time when I signed on, we did not have a Sauk City office, um, but as soon as I committed to full time, Nancy's like, it's time for us to expand. And so now we have our Sauk City office, which we absolutely love, four doors down from the vintage. It's on the same side of the street. It used to be the old cello bottling company and we redid it and um, Dave Jensen did all the construction and he's, uh, his work was incredible, spot on to what we wanted. So. Yeah, so that's why Remax just it felt right. It was the right, you know, with everybody, all the agents, we all get along so well. We all like to have a give back kind of mentality. So great. You maybe it's been it now. Last year you got um, a new thing in your life, Stella. Yes, Stella. Um, what's Stella up to these days? And well, Stella. 
Stella's my vintage camper. I bought her last, was it last August? I've been looking and looking and looking. And I found her up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And she is a 1973 bowler. So she's 13 feet long, made of fiberglass, hard sided. So it's very easy to trailer and move. I can pull it with my little Honda. Um, and so I've been spending the winter kind of getting her ready for the launch. And to, I redecorated her, pulled out the old green carpet, pulled out the old forest green cushions, got all the cushions, covered them. Um, and I'm going to be putting her out in the backyard probably <laughs> this week, uh, just because it's supposed to be nice and kind of have some backyard camping. Um, but my main goal with her is to take her to events and share her with our community and you know, people want to pop their head in and take a look or have some lemonade and cookies when we're at, you know, the park for events or art fairs when those open up. Um, I, I did have her at the Holly Jolly all decorated for Christmas. I partnered with Three Twist Tees, which is a cute gift shop in town. I'm like, why don't you girls come and decorate them and show our community what you're capable of and all the cool things that you have. And then it just made my Stella look even more quaint and cozy. Um, and so I'm just in love with her and she's exactly what I wanted. So I do plan on camping with her too, but it is mostly, you know, business and kind of my brand and it's not too far off for my authentic self. Like it's not a, it's not a, I don't know, a trend. I know a lot of people like these vintage campers. This is like true to Tracy Thompson. I'm outdoorsy. I love to camp. Uh, my phone number ironically is 843 camp. And this is just all plays right into that whole you know, theme, if you will. So I love her. I can't wait for you to see her and for the community to enjoy her as well. Yeah, me too. What, so during this, this time, the safer at home, you know, like isolation time, what have you learned about yourself? Anything new? Oh boy. Um, your reflection? Well, gosh, I, I guess I've learned that I took the opportunity to kind of get my systems in place and organize. I mean, I was, I've been still very busy with work, but it also gives me a step back to say, okay, I just need to really enjoy this time at home with my son and my husband, help my son with his schoolwork, who, by the way, the teachers in the school district have done so incredibly well adjusting to this um, and helping our children through this time. Um, so that was really eye-opening because I always have mommy guilt. I always feel bad when I'm leaving. I'm always feeling bad when I'm running out the door. And this way, it's kind of reeled me back in to say, it's okay to be home. It's okay to be centered. Um, and I can still get things done and be more present, if you will. So, um, so I've been just working on like different systems, uh, different things to kind of complete me as a person, to kind of well-round me as a mom and, of course, a businesswoman. How about you? Can I fire that back at you? Oh, two on the tables. What have I learned about myself? Um, I always thought that I was really an introvert who could just live in an extroverted world. And now that I don't, I, I'm not around people and I'm not having my events and things, what I've discovered is I actually think I'm an extrovert, but every extrovert like you can't just go 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 and never have downtime so I'm, I am an extrovert but I still need me time but now that I just have a lot more me time I'm like wait <laughs> <laughs> I need my people right um so, and that's like that's not like a like a life-changing discovery it's just like oh wait a minute no I just I'm I am an extrovert which probably doesn't surprise a lot of people but I don't know. Otherwise, uh, I'm, my, my type of work has changed because it's mostly virtual, um, but still working like crazy to try to just still be there for the community and for our patrons. And just to Lindsay, you've gotten so creative, excuse me, you've gotten so creative with um, the River Arts Inc. Like I've been watching you come up with all these different auctions and different jewelry auctions and conversations like this. Um, I, I know the board appreciates you, I'm sure of it, but I'm sure this just to think outside of the box to kind of reinvent, if you will, what you're doing there and to, you know, you kind of have to step it up and you did that and you did it consistently and you continue to do that. So I know you were busy, busy, busy. People don't realize how hard it is to like go through and have to refund all of your shows and try to figure out when you're going to slot in the next, you know, opportunity to find a show with what's going on. So I just want to commend you because... I'm noticing what you're doing, um, and it's really incredible to me. So, 
Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah. That's sweet. Well, that's yeah. all we have time for today. Unfortunately, okay. this goes by so fast. It does. But I'm so glad I got to chat with you. You too, Lindsay. Thanks for in the invitation. What's that? You look lovely. I can't wait to see you in person again. I do. I miss our chamber morning meetings. I miss our gatherings where we get to see everybody and our day drinking together. Yes, apparently. <laughs> Gosh. But you know, I have to say it's been nice to be able to get out and use like our Sock Prairie or our Great Sock State Trail, you know, being able to go down to the new parks and the beach. Yep. We, those things are open for us and it's been really nice getaway. Yep. So Sock thanks for having me. Cheers. Thanks, Trace. Cheers. Take care, hon.